Hello, my name is Ryan from Buster Beagle 3D. Today I'm going to be reviewing the Mingda Magician X. It's a new mid-level FDM printer that Mingda sent to me so that I might be able to share my opinion on it. It has auto-leveling, dual Z-axis rods, and assembles in minutes. So what else does this machine have, and do I like it? Well, let's find out. The Magician X comes in a large box and the machine is encased in styrofoam. This was a little odd to me since most of the printers and other machines from other companies I have received in the past use closed cell foam padding. Other than dealing with a few static styrofoam balls, the machine was well protected, so I guess that was fine. The Mingda Magician X has a build volume of 230 by 230 by 260 millimeters. The surface is a scratch-proof glass-heated bed that can reach temps of up to 110 degrees Celsius. If you look just below the heated bed, you will notice no springs and no knobs for bed leveling. That is because the Magician X runs an auto-leveling program that tests 16 points on the bed to level everything. No more sliding paper under the nozzle and moving it around to create that perfectly flat surface. To do this, you simply use a 3.5 inch color touchscreen and click on the leveling button. The printer will heat up the bed and nozzle and then run through its leveling procedure. It will touch 16 different points on the bed and that's it, you're done. You shouldn't need to redo that for a while unless you remove the glass. It's probably a good idea to repeat this step periodically, but everything has stayed pretty even so far. The Mingda Magician X uses a double gear direct drive extruder. This is actually new to me as all of my past machines have been Bowden setups and the printer has not disappointed so far. The direct drive extruder would also make printing with different materials such as flexible filaments easier than the Bowden setup. At the top of the extruder, the machine also comes with a filament runout sensor to make sure you don't ruin your print midway by pausing the print if it sees if you run out. The three axes of the machine run on aluminum extrusion. The x-axis plate as well as the two plates that run up and down the dual z axes are steel. Many of the other components on the machine are injection molded parts. I couldn't find any parts on this machine that were made with a 3D printer, so it's nice to see that Mingda went that extra step to make sure the build was made with high quality parts. From the stepper motors to the limit switches to the cable management, the machine seems to be very well built. On the back of the machine you can see the dual Z axis lead screws that also have a belt at the top to help you synchronize the lifting of the Z axis together. It does a very nice job, and as you can see from these models, it does an amazing job printing the surface and reducing the Z-wobble. The print on the right was done with this machine, and the print on the left was done with one of my older 3D printers. An injection molded spool holder snaps to the top of the frame and can be installed on either side. This does add extra height to the machine, but it seems to work just fine. There are also tensioning knobs on both the X and Y axis that are very nice to see and will make it quick and easy if I ever need to adjust that. On the front of the Magician X we have three different ports for making a connection to the machine. We have a USB port, an SD card reader, and a USB-C connection. I know this may seem like a trivial thing, but I am so happy to see the ports on the front of the machine. I do have some other printers where these ports are on the back and since I usually store these printers in a closet, it's hard for me to get back up there and swap the cards in and out. The machine also comes with a 4GB SD card that contains the manuals as well as a copy of Cura, a Cura material profile, and some sample files which I will talk about in a little bit. The Mingda Magician X comes with a nice touchscreen with a pretty intuitive menu that lets you control many different aspects of the machine. It's easy to use and beeps when using, but that can also be turned off in the settings. Speaking of noise, this machine is super quiet. With pretty quiet fans as well as TMC2209 stepper drivers, this machine runs very quietly. It made me realize how loud some of my other machines are since it is so quiet. And finally, the machine comes with a storage compartment as well as a place to insert some extra SD cards to keep them handy when you need them. 
So this is all great, but how does it print? The first thing I did was run the leveling program before installing the filament. Once that is done, I clicked on preheat and then PLA to heat the nozzle up to the proper PLA setting. I then inserted the PLA through the filament runout sensor and then pulled back on this tab while keeping my thumb on the tension knob to release the pressure on the double drive extruder and manually feed the filament in slightly. Once it is in there a little bit and the nozzle is heated, I press menu, extrude, and then load to start loading the filament into the machine. I then inserted the SD card into the machine with the gold connectors face up and then press SD and then chose this DEER file on the card. The machine will start to heat up and when it started to print, it will first print a line down the left of the build plate to prime the nozzle. This is also the time to make any fine-tuned adjustments to the nozzle height. The leveling process determines just that, the leveling of the bed, but it is the limit switches that determine the height. You may need to make some micro adjustments to the height of the nozzle. Click on the baby step button and then click on either increase or decrease depending on how that line starts printing. If you start to hear the extruder clicking, you are too low and need to increase this value. If you see the bend of the filament as it's laying the layer down, you are too high and need to decrease this number. Once you are happy with the level it is printing at, click the save button and you should have those settings in place the next time you print a file. So I printed this DEER file and it did a very nice job. It printed with a raft for some reason, but probably would have done just fine without the raft. Either way, it came out pretty nice and the interlocking parts that printed in place came out very nice. The next thing I wanted to print was this calibration cube. It was not on the card, but I wanted to print it anyway to test how accurate the values of the machine were. It printed very nice and the values were perfect. The next thing I decided to print was this Monkey King file on the card. I didn't know what this was going to look like, so I thought I would print it and find out. The printer seemed to do a very nice job printing the file, but the file that was sliced seemed to have way too much support material on the model. It was so encased in filament that I had a hard time removing the support, and since I didn't know what this model looked like, I wasn't sure what was model and what was support in some cases. I actually reached out to Mingda to see if they could send me the STL for this file, so I might be able to re-slice it with some better settings, which they did almost right away. I re-sliced, I reprinted with my own settings, and the part came out much better than before, but I still had a few issues. After further investigation of the 3D file, I noticed some issues with the model, such as gaps and non-3D printer friendly attributes, so I dropped it into ZBrush, did some modeling, and fixed the issues I found with the model. Reprinted, and was very happy with how this model came out. I sent the new and improved G-code back to Mingda, which they were very happy about, but if they didn't update their website, I will make the files available with the links in the description. The next thing I printed was this vase, which was also on the card. It printed very nice on the front of the vase, but I noticed on the back that the Z-seam was very noticeable on the surface of the vase. I once again reached out to Mingda and asked if I could now have that vase STL file, which they also sent out right away. I figured since this was a vase, I would use the spiralized outer contour option in Cura, otherwise known as vase mode, and the printer printed that file flawlessly. The original file also seemed to be missing the top of the vase for some reason. I also sent this G-code file back to Mingda, but again, if they don't post it, I will in the description. Next, I really wanted to put this printer through a tougher test. I decided to print this Skull Art pen holder model, and honestly I have to say that this is one of the best looking 3D prints I have ever created. It printed amazingly even though there was plenty of traveling between printing, and I was super happy with how this 3D print came out. I then printed a 3D scan of my head just to print something large on the machine. As I was saying before, you can see how nice and smooth the surface came out. So in the end, I really did have fun with this machine. I have not had a direct drive extruder before, but this printer did not disappoint. I do like the automatic leveling and not having to deal with adjusting the springs on the bottom of the heated bed. With the dual Z-axis lead screws, I really have not had a printer with less Z-wobble or smoother walls. This machine again is whisper quiet and certainly won't disturb anybody in the room. Now for what could be improved. 
I wish there was a way for the leveling process to also run some sort of height process as well. It seems as if that should be achievable in the firmware. As I have also said in some of my other reviews, I'm not a huge fan of the spool holder on the machine frame itself. It's more of a personal preference, but sometimes I feel that it leads to extra wobble of the machine from the added weight. It also adds quite a bit of height to the machine, so if you were placing this on a shelf or something like that, you would need to account for the spool height as well. Given that this is a direct drive, there might not be much of an option here, but it's something I might try to remedy with my own setup later. I would also like to see easier setup and profile settings for Cura. I had to go into the settings in Cura and add my own machine properties, as well as set up things like the start and end G-code. Not something too hard for someone like me with experience and multiple 3D printers, but might be a little daunting to someone just starting out. I also felt like the sample test files needed an improvement, which is why I asked for the files from the company and was really happy with how I was able to tweak them, which again I will provide if the company does not. It's simply that this machine can print amazingly, but only when fed the proper files to print. And lastly, in full disclosure, I had an issue with the assembly of this machine. The machine comes almost completely assembled, and you really only have to put the x-axis gantry into the base and connect a few wires, and you're done and ready to print. For whatever reason, my steel x-axis plate was bent. I'm really not sure how this could happen, and to be honest, I feel like it was just a fluke, but it happened, so I'm mentioning it. I reached out to the company and explained the issue and was very impressed by the speed and concern of the reply I received from them about my issue. Now again, I received this machine from the company for review purposes and had I bought it, I probably would have been the moment I boxed it back up and exchanged it for another one. But if you know my channel, you know I like to tinker and I asked the company if they could send me the replacement parts which they very quickly did, and I was able to install the new part and everything was good to go. I will continue to play with the Mingda and its settings and will post updates if anything changes, but at this time I would easily recommend this printer to someone who's looking for a 3D printer and honestly already have. I can't wait to see what the company comes out with. Thank you again for watching, and if you found this useful, please do hit that like button and consider subscribing for more videos having to do with 3D printers, CNC machines, laser engravers, injection molding machines, and all things 3D. If you have any questions about this or any of my other videos, please do leave a comment in the section below, and I will try my best to answer any questions you may have. Till next time, goodbye.